where on the lambing fields of the Isle of Wight, and the ravens are stalking the ewes. This one is in labour and is struggling. She's up now. She's From about 800 metres, we watch the large corvids manoeuvring to attack and eat the lamb as it's being born. We can't help. The shepherd is attending to another ewe. At this point is where I find the aftermath of what the crows and the ravens have been eating whilst my back's been turned. We can see that she's got a lamb coming out and they're trying to peck at the lamb before it's even hit the ground. Heading across the valley, he fears it'll be too late. It is not a pleasant sight, but it is a familiar one on this farm. No, no tongue and no eyeballs. This is what we're faced with on a daily, daily occurrence. So we watched this, studied the sheep from the other side of the valley with the long lens. You see she's trying to give birth, had a bit of a problem, so we had to come and give her a hand and that lamb was eaten alive in the process. Eyeballs and its tongue are gone too, and if it had survived, it wouldn't be able to feed. They've also, whilst the ewe's been laid on her side, they've also tried pecking at her back. It's either in the back or in the lower abdomen that they go for, because they know where the lambs are inside them, and they'll open them up, quite literally do a caesarean, whilst the ewe's still alive. It should have been twins. The second lamb has suffocated. This one's dead as well. So, yeah. Oh, that's a shame. We'll definitely take her back to the farm then and give her, give her two lambs as a replacement for that. Yeah, it's a shame. We've come to Cheverton Farm because it is on the front line. They're being bombarded by policies, regulations and conditions from those who just don't seem to understand how the countryside works. They are already feeling the financial costs of the general licence fiasco, but to add insult to injury, the Isle of Wight will soon be home to 60 sea eagles with one of the release sites right next door. So what reassurances have the farming community had from those in charge of the project, Natural England and the Roy Dennis Foundation? None at all. No, at no time have, we, have I been uh, contacted by anyone other than the NFU uh, to get my opinion on this and other, other sheep farmers or other stakeholders in it. The reason that I'm concerned about this project is I regard myself as a stakeholder. These uh, eagles be released next door to my property and will have an impact on my business and I think that qualifies me as a stakeholder of the 80 plus percent of of the local population that supported it and I'm not saying that my opinion or my vote is worth any more than theirs but I do not believe that all of those supporters are stakeholders. Their business or their lives will not be affected positively or negatively by this project. Some of them very possibly and I'd love to speak to more of them to see where their view, view comes from. The largest raptor in the country is being reintroduced here and the farmers have been kept in the dark. Andrew wants to make it clear that he's not against the project, but once bitten, twice shy. Buzzards and ravens were once rare. Now, as we've seen, they're thriving. My own personal view was that I wasn't against the project, but I wanted some conditions put in place that should it cause us a problem to our business, there is compensation there. Now we've been reassured on many times that that won't be required because it won't have a negative effect on our business. Back on the fields and Ross is working hard to cover the 730 acre farm, trying to keep his flock safe. He finds it demoralising, marking and tagging a newborn to come back a few hours later and find its eyes and tongue pecked out. 
This is the future of our Cheverton flock right here. And the problem we're having now at this stage, the ewe's done her bit, we've come along and done our bit, and then the crow flies in, and as you can see, these lambs aren't that mobile at the moment, not until tomorrow or the next day, and they're just sitting ducks waiting for corvids to come and eat them, quite literally eat them alive. We don't have an issue with sea eagles. We have an issue with those deciding their destiny without talking to the people. It will harm the most. And the groups that censor and deny the long-term consequences of this rewilding. Now, Natural England says, There is no evidence of this being a problem where the eagles live alongside lowland sheep in Europe. However, the youngsters being introduced to the Isle of Wight are being rehomed from the west coast of Scotland, where these images were taken, so they already have a taste for lamb. We published these shots two weeks ago. They've now been picked up by the national press. Some rewilders are suggesting it's hare. It is clearly a lamb. Ask a sheep farmer. Now that would be a first. My personal view, I'm a pro-conservationist, but I do kind of, I feel quite strongly about this, this particular project. Um, I don't personally have a problem with sea eagles. Um, I just have a problem with the release site being so close to um, two of the biggest sheep farms on the island. We've already got so many things against us. We already have fox and badger predation, um, seagulls, uh, the whole corvid family all visit us on a daily basis. Um, and, you know, I can understand losing dead lambs, a stillborn lamb, if that's a free feed, um, as carrion for something, then that, I don't have a problem with that. But when we're having live lambs taken, they're under 24 hours old that aren't able to fend for themselves. Um, you know, it, it's very disheartening. Um, it's sickening, really, when the effort that we all put in, um, not just us here, but farmers up and down the country, um, and all we're trying to do is feed our families and ultimately feed the country. Back in the yard, and some good news. The ewe who lost her twins is being introduced to some orphaned lambs. It looks like she will accept them as her own. The latest estimate is that the farm has lost 200 lambs so far to corvids. It means this farm will have seriously to consider other strategies, and that's before the biggest bird in Britain comes home to roost.